what if we did this? What if I came over here and I closed the door and then we move back? Move back a bit more. So they're over there shooting. I just heard a gunshot. I, I hope that they're, you know, zombie bait now. So let's just move Elaine. Hey everybody, welcome back. Falcon, Dead State. We are here. Where are we at actually? I'm not even sure. Let's see. Downtown Sensaba. Sensaba. Downtown Sensaba, I believe. We just finished this up. I do believe, if I'm right, we actually acquired two new party members here, and it was Oscar and Melinda, Melina, something to that nature. So we acquired two other people last episode. It is 11 11 a.m., kind of a weird time. I'm not sure what it is, but for some reason, 11 11 always has like a big part to play in my life. I feel like I'm Jim Carrey in number 23, the movie 23 anyway. Every time I look at the clock, especially at nighttime, it's always 11, 11 p.m. for some reason or another. It's kind of really eerie, and now it's kind of following me in-game, which is even a little bit more eerier. By the way, um, let's see, where are we going to go from here? I'm not entirely sure, but let's actually head upwards a little bit. Now, my only concern right now is that um, it is early, right? So we could still check another area out. Oh, we have a grocery store here. Bargain Al Supermarket. Yeah, sure, let's check it out. My only concern is that even though we're going to check this out, Apologies for the jumping commentary there. I usually try to stop talking during loading screens. I like to edit those out during um, editing itself, and sometimes it also tends to cut off my sentences mid-word. So uh, my only concern right now is, as you can see, Walter White's at 75 max HP, Elaine's at 90, and so is Joel. My beefiest character right now is Doug, but the problem with Doug is that he has no equipment, he has no armor, so he's kind of more of a hindrance. I mean, I like Doug. But he's more of a hindrance now because I kind of have to babysit him until we get some proper equipment for him, some proper armor. Speaking of armor, I don't think we have any armor for him, do we? Or am I wrong? Because we picked up the destroyed armor, but obviously it's destroyed, so you can't really wear it. Um, let's see here. Next character. We're looking for old Dougie. Yeah, I mean, Doug only has the... Well, he's got some boots on now, but obviously we need some better armor for the body over here. So either way, um, we just got to be extra careful with this map here today. Now let's take a look at perusal around here. Let's see how big this map is, see what we're kind of getting involved with here. Again, we're going to have to play really, really defensively more so than usual just because of the fact that, you know, we're not necessarily in the greatest state in terms of our HP. This is going to be quite a bit of a sizable map yet again. So we're kind of running into these over and over now, which is good. I mean, I don't necessarily mind that. It's just that there is a little bit more danger involved with this. So I'm not sure what we're dealing with here. Zombies, looters, I guess we'll find out. So let's, um, I guess we could call it, go down the street over here. Just take a nice throw in the middle of the day. Nothing going on over here. Let's just pretend there's no zombies and things of that nature. I'm not sure why I'm leading the party with Doug, because that seems like a really terrible idea. Walter White, if you could definitely take point over here, that would probably be the best for everybody involved. I have a few vehicles over here. Let me hit the Z key, just so that we know what we're able to loot over here. So green car, number one. Gasoline, tell me it's gasoline, man. Tell me it's gasoline, baby. You have to go all the way around for this? Really? Okay. It is gasoline at the very least. Oh shit, I just realized that Walter White's kind of a little stocked up here. Give me one second then, and what we're going to do is pitch some stuff over to Doug. So, Dougie, let me give you... Um, I guess everything that I have, might as well throw it over to you, right? I wish there was a select all feature in the trade menu. Is there? I, I mean, I don't see one. Is there like a, some sort of hidden key that I don't know about? I wouldn't be surprised if there was, but... You know, let's go down this way. Let's um, toss that stuff over to you. You can still carry a bit more. Good. I like to hear that. Toss that over as well. Oh, can't carry that much. It's probably the gasoline. So let me remove the gasoline, toss this over to you. Perfect. Alrighty. What if I just toss the gasoline over to Elaine? She might be stocked up as well. Yep, can't carry that much either. Joel, you seem to be looking pretty good over here, my man. So let me give you the gasoline. Alrighty. So that'll make it a little bit easier to kind of um, loot with um, Walter up front. So we have some more gasoline, there's a card over here, but that's going to be empty. So I guess before we even get into the shopping center over here, let's kind of browse around the streets, make sure that all these cars have been um, properly looted in terms of gasoline. And we're not making a big error over here. So before I started recording today, kind of like a little bit of an interesting side note while we're kind of wandering around over here trying to find some items, I had a, a phone call. And I'm not a big phone person in general, gasoline, I'll take that. That's exactly what I want to find, actually. Gasoline. I'm not a big phone person in general. Um, I think my many years in the past working retail kind of made me really sour towards phone calls because I'm a big screener and I'm not even, I guess, um, shamed 
Ashamed to admit that, I, I am a big screener of phone calls now just because of working retail for so many years. I kind of was in a in a good situation, I guess, where not everybody feels this way, right? But I, I made a lot of good friends in the jobs that I had in the past, right? So a lot of my co-workers turned into good friends. So whenever people would call me, I would always pick up the phone and say, like, hey, what's up? But unfortunately, because of the slash outside and inside of work relationship, I never knew whether phone calls were just kind of like a, a cordial, uh, like a, you know, hey, how you doing? Or, hey, you want to hang out? Or if it was like, you know, something else involved as in like, hey, you want to cover my shift today? And I, I hated that so much because, you know, obviously our fucking schedule was posted up front or in the back room anyway. There is a zombie over here. So zombies, cool, I could deal with zombies. So our schedules were like always posted in the backs, so like, you know, available to everybody to see. So you knew for a fact that, you know, when somebody wanted their shift covered, they'd probably be back there over there perusing the schedule and be like, oh, it's free up this day. And whenever I had free days, I turned into like a vicious screener because on my free days, I sort of got, I would always get, you know, a call from a friend. And I'm not sure, is he calling me to hang out? Is he calling you to see what's up? Or is he calling me to cover my got to, to cover his goddamn shift? So I always had that little kind of mentality where it was kind of like, well, what is this call about? So I turned into a vicious screener because of that fact alone. Because, you know, here's the thing about, you know, retail and just people covering shifts. Oh, zombie over here. Run, 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 run. Let's get out of the way here for a moment. Zombie's not going to initiate combat with me, motherfucker. I'm going to initiate combat with you. Alrighty? You don't make the rules, I make the rules. And if you make the rules, I, I assure you, I'll fucking break the rules, my friend. So, and here's the thing about, like, you know, covering shifts too. Like, you know, people have a tendency just to not take no for a fucking answer. Like, you know, here, here's a, here's a common tactic. Hey, how you doing? Oh, you know, pretty good. Oh, cool, cool. What are you up to today? It's kind of like when you hear that, it's kind of like a red alert. It's kind of like a flag, or it's kind of like, wait a minute. Why are you asking me what am I up to today? So it's kind of like, um, you know, just just things I got to do, probably. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, you, you want to cover a shift? It's like, not really, no. And then you get the dreaded why. Like, why? It's like, what do you mean, why? I just don't want to fucking cover your shift. Why do I have to have, like, a good excuse? Would I, would I have to be preferring brain surgery on the Pope or something? Is that, like, what's a viable excuse for you? Like, it doesn't matter what I give you as an excuse. I just don't want to cover your shift. It's like, I could tell you I'm going to sit here at home in my fucking underwear masturbating all day. And that's fine. You know why? Because that's my prerogative. Does that make it any more different? Like, you know, oh yeah, oh, I had some important things to do today. Like, I have to, you know, have open heart surgery. <laughs> is that going to suddenly make it better? Oh, you have to have open heart surgery? Okay, that's understandable. You're going to sit around and masturbate all day? Um, you could probably cover my shift. It's like, no, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Don't ask me why I'm covering your shift. I just don't want to do it. It doesn't matter why. The reason is not really applicable right now. No means no. Alrighty, you know who taught me that? Winnie the Pooh. When did you teach me that? When I was growing up. And, you know, it talked to me about... Winnie the Pooh talked to me about strangers, you know. Wanting to, you know, unfortunately get a little bit comfortable, a little bit too comfortable with you as a kid. You know, if you catch what I'm talking about here. And Winnie the Pooh said no is no. And that's the thing that I live by every my every day-to-day -day life. No is no. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit. But, um, yeah, it, it's just it's just so annoying. It's like, what does it matter? Why not? Just no. And, um, so, you know, and then you get the whole dreaded, like, um, guilt trip. It's kind of like, oh, man, because I need to do this and I need to do that. It's like, you know what? I don't care what you need to do, unfortunately. Um, just because you have something more important than me to do, maybe, a possibility, doesn't mean that I necessarily want to go in on my day off to work just because, you know, you have something important to do. You should have thought about that beforehand, my friend. You should have asked for that day off. Don't call me here suddenly and be like, hey... You know, I know you're comfortable at home, enjoying the fact that you can have a day off, and suddenly it's like, hey, cover my shift. It's like, no, you know what? I'm not in the mood for work today, my friend. I work five days a week already, I'm not going to make it six. Fuck that. I need my time away from people, especially when you work retail. I mean, I guess it also depends on your type of job, but, you know, this was mostly a retail type of thing, so... You know, when you work retail, man, uh, it's you run into, like, the most... Worst people of all kind, like, the basically... Oh, my lord, speaking of the worst people of all kind... Fucking bargain now? Yeah, that's retail right there. That's retail hell, especially during Christmas, too. Oh, my lord. Never again. I will never work retail during Christmas, especially. Like, you know, high-impact areas, like, a, you know, electronic stores, you know, toy stores. Fuck all that stuff, man, during Christmas. It is the worst. But, I mean, when you work retail, if, you know, if some of you guys are familiar or not, 
you just run into like something about retail just brings like the worst of humanity to your attention like you know it's just some of the the people you run into like it, it, it's it's just weird like you you run into like the i don't know like i'm not sure if it's like just people that are entitled you run into entitled people you run into spoil people, people that don't take no for an answer, people that get mad at you. You're the messenger here. Like, you know, when you work in retail, you're probably just, you know, either a regular worker, supervisor, things of that nature. But you can't control overall, even if you were the store manager, you can't control the stock of your store, right? So, you know, people come in there, it's kind of like, oh, do you have this in stock? No. Why not? What do you mean, why not? We just don't have, do you think we have shit year-round? Do, do, you, do you understand the question you're asking me right now? Like, you know, what, are you asking me to control supply and demand over here, too? Just here working, you know, getting paid by the hour, my man. I barely get medical benefits. I don't have answers to your questions right now. This is actually really terrifying over here, too. Um, who is this? That's a coyote scout. Now, before I go keep talking about what I was talking about, I'm trying to figure out how I could get these zombies to attack the coyote scout instead. Um, let's see here. Is there a... Oh, there's an entrance back there, too. Okay. One second. One second here. So what I'm thinking we could do is we could probably go around. And... Either deal with that coyote ourselves, or try to, like, maybe cause enough of a ruckus so that the zombies come over here and check it out. And they're kind of like, hey, what's going on over here? And then they'll deal with that coyote for us. Because, you know, coyotes, fuck them. They're a difficult bunch to deal with. Now, my only fear about the coyote is that if he does get fucked by the zombies, then he'll get turned into a zombie. And I won't be able to loot him. And more than likely, he has some armor that could be really beneficial for Doug, who we have no armor with. So, um, that's something to really consider over here. So what I'm going to do is let me go into solo mode. You guys hang out here for one second. Let me just take a little perusal in here. Okay. Now... Is this like the bike of the bi of the coyote in there? Because if so, it means it's really probably only one person in here. Now, the thing with the coyote is that the moment he sees me, he's going to freak out. Oh, okay. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I was going to try to get out of here really quickly. Especially because the rest of my party is all the way inside over here. Alright, so I got shot in the face. I'm not too pleased with that. Oh, dude, 30 damage? Oh my lord, alrighty. Um, I'm gonna gut you. Well, technically, that's not what you're doing, is it? Because you have, you tend to have a fucking gun on you, not exactly a knife. So, we're looking at at least three coyotes, it seems. I'm not too pleased with this whole endeavor here. This guy's over here shooting wildly, too, so he's causing all sorts of a ruckus, too. Um, alrighty, so here's what we do. I think what we do is we post up with Joel, like, right about here. <clears throat> and we end our turn with him. <clears throat> Alrighty, oh shit. Here comes Shotgun Man. He's just fucking me up now. Alrighty, <clears throat> Elaine, you come over here and just hang out on the other side. You're gonna have to heal Walter. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get Walter back here in time before he gets knocked out, because this is kind of really terrifying at this point. So you just hang out right about there. Now, the other dude's gonna probably roam up on us really, really soon. Thankfully, it's gonna be Walter White's turn next, so he could probably run over here and hopefully get a heal in. Not sure how, how, if that's gonna happen or not, but that's my intention. Doug, you come over here now. And you just, um, you know, hold your ground. Now it's my turn finally. So, oh, what I'd love to do is just get the fuck out of here. So let's, um, start doing that. Come back over here. Come over here. Can I close this door by any chance? You don't have enough action points to close the door. That's fine. Let's just move you over here then. Now we. Oh, fuck. I forgot we weren't in party mode anymore. I was going to try to get my people the fuck out of there. <clears throat> okay. So we know they're in there. What if we did this? What if I came over here and I closed the door and then we move back? Move back a bit more. So they're over there shooting. I just heard a gunshot. I, I hope that they're, you know, zombie bait now. So let's just move Elaine. I'm not going to have enough moves to heal Walter after this, actually. That's fine. Let's just get her close enough to try a heal. It's not going to work. I think it requires like 4 AP. Yeah, it didn't really work out. And there's a bunch of gunshots happening in there. I'm not sure if you can hear those. I'll try to pump the volume up a little bit high so you guys could hear that. But there is a gunfight going on in there. And that is quite alright with me because it means that I am going to be safe. <laughs> and those dudes are going to get wrecked by those zombies. Sure, they'll turn into zombies. 
But I'd rather deal with the coyotes after they're zombies rather than when they're human and they could, you know, really cause some damage on us. So let's heal up a bit here. Let's make it twice. 65 HP now. We were at 75. That's really, really bad. So let me switch back over to this and end my turn. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back around and we are going to go check out the other entrance, the one that we were at initially, and find out what's happening in there. Oh my lord, there's so many turns happening right now. There's such a fucking big war happening in that bargain aisle right now. You know, essentially what's happening in there is what a retail store looks like in, um... Oh my lord. Uh, it's 121 dB. More than likely, the X is going to be flooded with zombies too because of those, um, coyotes and they're just shooting wildly. Alrighty, Elaine. Yeah, um, Walter White's healed already, so we should be fine in that regard. What I want to do is just get us far as possible away from there. So, let's end turn here. Now, they're still over there. Oh, dude. Yeah. They are going to alert every single zombie in the fucking Texas area, apparently, to our location. Goddamn coyotes. Alrighty, that's fine. I can deal with zombies. They're a lot more easier to deal with than the coyotes itself. Man, those coyotes really did a number on Walter White, too, by the way. You see all that's happening over here? Rotten female hits coyote. Coyote man <laughs> absorbs hit. Coyote enforcer hits gross man for 66 points of damage. Oh man. Gross man makes one last grab in the air and then falls to the ground in a bloody heap. Oh dude, this is so crazy. Alrighty. You come over here now. And just end my turn. <laughs> this is so fucking awesome. I I'm glad I went down this route. Like, this, this was my intention. Mind you, I didn't really foresee the fact that it would make enough noise to like alert people to the fact that World War II is happening in there right now. But hey, it's still kind of working out for us in a degree. You come down this side now. And then Walter White, you come over here. <clears throat> now the only downside to this is that we're going to be here for a while now because there's really not much we can do because the Coyotes will be fighting over here. So we are kind of stuck moving in a grid-like pattern for a while because of the battle going on over there. So my intention right now is to go all the way to the last or the first entrance that we saw. And I apologize, I just have background noise. Apparently I'm recording from the fucking steel mills today because there's a construction site right next to me out of nowhere. And I thought I lived in, in the city, almost in the hood. But no, apparently I live in a construction site now. That is kind of really loud. I, I, I hope it doesn't come in through much through the video itself. <clears throat> I usually edit my videos anyway for noises and stuff, so I hope this is a, I could kind of edit that out. But it is kind of fucking noisy out there. There's like a drill machine going on out there. <clears throat> so yeah, I do apologize for that. I guess in the meantime, we could go back to the whole phone thing though, right? So, yeah, I mean, retail itself just kind of um, taught me to, you know, just screen everything. Doesn't matter if it's like a friend or not. And that just made me sour to, like, towards phones in general now. Like, I don't even have conversations on the phone. Like, I, I know like a lot of people like to just call and chit-chat. And I am not a fan of chit-chatting on the phone. Like, I'm a f I am I like to talk to people. Mind you, I'm not a complete recluse, or I'm not like, you know, completely bitter or anything like that. I do enjoy talking to people, but I I'm like more of a face-to-face -face type of person, which is kind of weird considering, you know, I'm over here doing Let's Plays and whatnot. But, uh, I mean, this is kind of different. It's kind of like, you know, I'm doing something that I do enjoy. But what I'm talking about is like mostly just like um, phone conversations where people just call you. And <clears throat> this is outside of the whole, um, you know, cover and shift spectrum. This is just people calling you to call you, right? By the way, let me go look at this map here really quickly, or this entrance. There's gotta be zombies here, right? No zombies? Oh, dude, we might have some... We lucked out. Okay. So, we, we at least know there's no zombies in that exit now. Hey, how you doing up there, Crow? What are you up to? How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at that guy. Um, either way. So, um, I'm not a big chit-chatter, like, especially because I have a lot of friends that just call to... No real reason at all. Like, it's just like, there's no importance to the call. It's just kind of like... And this is people... And here's the thing. I can understand chit-chat if you don't see the person for a while on... You know, if you don't see them for quite a while between times that you do actually see them, right? Like, I'm talking like, you know, you don't see somebody for like four or five days, you know. You kind of, I guess, call and be like, hey, what's going on, you know? Courteous type of thing. I don't do it myself, but some people do it, and I understand that some people do that. And that's fine. What I'm talking about, though, is, um... Let me walk in here really quickly. Just people who you see almost on a day-to-day -day basis, and they just call you to be like, Hey, how you doing? It's like, I'm, I'm cool. What are you up to? Uh, you know, just just stuff. Uh, and then there's like this weird pause where it's just kind of like, Alrighty, man. 
did, did you did you call me for something here? I mean, I don't say that. I, I have sometimes said that, but most of the time you're thinking, did you call me here for a particular reason or I mean, what's going on here? And did, it's kind of like a call where it's kind of like they expect you to start making the conversation afterwards. And it's kind of like, well, wait a minute, you're the one who called me. Why am I the one expected to kind of like, you know, make a conversation now? And then people get upset too. It's just like, oh, oh, I see you're busy. It's like, what do you mean I'm busy? I'm not busy. I I'm doing nothing. I'm just hanging out. You're the one who called me. Why am I the one who's supposed to like, you know, suddenly take control of this conversation when you called me? Here's the thing, my friend. You should have gone over your notes before you called me and realized what we're going to talk about. Because now we're in a predicament where obviously I'm not really in the talkative mood. And you're calling me just to see like, you know, how's it going? Or what am I up to? <laughs> so either way, I'm just sorry. I'm just over here spitballing a little bit about phones and shit like that. And the reason why that happened is because actually before... Okay. Coyote... There's actually a few coyotes left. And of course they're going after Walter White again, but that's okay. I'd rather deal with this guy one at a time. <clears throat> and this guy apparently has only a machete, so he's not going to be able to take like pot shots from far off. I mean, mind you, I'm making it sound like it's nothing. Oh yeah, this guy only has a machete. Or not really a machete, but a fire axe. No big deal. You know, just a dude with a fire axe over here. So let's go into this. He's slightly wounded, which is fine at the very least. Let me go into, hopefully, cripple. 75% chance to hit. Let's try it out. Gonna obviously miss because making, I mean, landing that, you know, hit would have probably made things a lot easier for us. And the game is not going to allow that to happen to me right now. So what I do here is let me switch over to my gun. Do I have a shot? 80% chance to hit. Let's take it. So we got that one in. And then we have one more shot. Wounded only. All right, at least we got both of those shots in, which is going to help us out. Badly wounded. Alrighty. Now, Elaine, do me a solid. Let's have you walk over here. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this could be a problem. This could be a fucking major problem. Did you guys kill all the zombies? Jesus Christ, there was a lot of zombies in there. What happened? Zombies, you disappointed me. All right, let me set this as active. 100% chance to hit. Take it. Oh, please, for God's sake, kill this man already. Kill this fucking man. Thank God. Alrighty. Uh, Doug, you move back now. Walter White. Oh my lord, you are in such a bad predicament right now, my friend. Let me set this as active, and what you need to do is actually just get back. Are we looking- are we dealing with handguns right now, more than likely? Yes. Okay. You need a heal, and you need to actually get back behind some cover. So, let's go over here. Let me swap you out with Joel. And then, maybe you could drop a little bit of a heal on yourself. 58 out of 60 HP. Yeah, he is so fucked right now. That's fine. Let's just move you behind the lane now. Okay, Joe's turn again. Two dudes. Two dudes. Alright, Joe, you have to go into um, pistol mode here. Undamaged and undamaged. Did these guys just deal with those zombies like single-handedly? Apparently so. How much ammunition do you motherfuckers have? Does, that, does those gun ever run out of gun, like bullets? What's the problem here? Alrighty, so we have to take with this shot. It's not a great shot, but it's a shot that we have to take nonetheless, so... Please land. Okay, one landed. Wounded. That's what I like to see. Thank God both of those actually landed. Now he's badly wounded. Alrighty. So now it is Elaine's turn again. 55% chance to hit. I don't like it. I don't have to tell you that, but I don't like it a lot. So what we do is... um Badly wounded. One, two, three. I'd be able to get a basic attack in, but then Elaine's just out there in space to take all these hits, absorb all these hits, and I don't want that happening, but I prefer her to take the hits than Doug, because Doug has no equipment. Or do I just heal? And is it really worth healing Walter at this point when he only has 60 HP and he's at 58 already? Probably not. So let's do this. We're going to walk forward once. 60% chance to hit. Now here's the problem. This um, body that's knocked out is in the way. What are the chances we kill this guy? And he turns into a zombie and goes after his friends. That would be ideal, to be honest with you. Let me switch over to this. And let me take a swing on this dude. Okay. So now he did. We did kill him. Elaine, you just move back. We'll end our turn. Here comes this guy. I'm going to take a shot at Doug. Doug took 30 HP damage. That could have been worse. Went after Joel. Joel took quite a significant amount of damage. He missed twice, or he missed the second one at the very least. Alrighty. So with Doug now, 75 and 25 chance to hit. This guy's almost dead, though. That's the problem. So we definitely have to get the knockout on him. 75, take it. Oh, Doug. Come on, man. We need this one. 
Dog, you fucking disappointed me. Okay, and now with Walter, I'm worried about putting him up front, so we can't do that. And now we're again making all the noise in the world too, so I think it's probably time we drop back a little bit and just kind of hang out. Maybe put him at an angle because he, he can't hit diagonally just in case, so we'll do that. Alrighty. Any zombies roaming up behind me? I hope not. So it's back to Joel. Alrighty, Joel. We have to kind of go through these uh, bullets, unfortunately, my friend. This guy's badly wounded. I think it's really imperative that we get him out of the way. So, do we take two shots from here, or do we move forward and take a better percent shot? I think we just take two shots from here and hope for the best. Thank God. That one hit. And you have 85 over here. I say you take this one, too. Okay. Wounded. That's, that's good. That's a lot better. Can I check this body out really quickly? Oh, dude, yes. He does have football pads, which would be great for um, Doug right now. Now, the thing is with her, can I actually carry this? I can take the, carry the, the football pads. I can take this. I could actually take mm, everything but the fire axe, which is fine. I will leave the fire axe behind. Not really something we do need right now. And do we take two shots? I say we take two shots, man. So, 55 is actually not too good of a shot, though. Unless we kill the dude that's next to him, and then he turns into a zombie. <laughs> I am banking so much on the fact that these guys are going to turn into zombies. So let's go over here. One, two. We try to kill this guy. And we fail at killing him, unfortunately. So we just move back, I would say. Oh, Doug. Not this way, Doug. Not this way, Doug. Okay. Doug is panicking. Forget this, count me out, he says. But at least he landed two shots on that guy, which is, you know, better. He's almost dead. Okay. This is it, man. This is our chance to shine. Like, we have to make this happen at this point. Alright, so let's get close. I'm gonna try to heal Doug next time around, if I get the chance. I won't get the chance this time around, but next chance I will. Let's move behind him. I think I have a command that calms people down, don't I? We'll see about that soon. Alrighty, Joe, you come. Take a shot, 75? No. We need to go forward a bit. 80%? I say we take the guaranteed shot, though, right? So let's get him as close as possible, and if anything, draw the fire to us instead of Doug. That's enough for the knockout. And turn. Oh, no, 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 no. Doug, move. Doug, move. Okay, that's fine. That is completely fine. Who is this guy? He's wounded, though, so that's fine. Oh, my fucking god. This has been quite a fucking mission. Alrighty. If we get another shot at him, well, we have to at this point, right? I, I don't want to, you know, I miss Max so much, god damn it. This would not be happening with Max right now, I'll tell you that much. Um, We only have three more shots with the good gun, too. I think we're out of ammunition back home because, by the way, I haven't talked about this, but the game has been eating my ammunition by storing my guns in the... In the safe house, it's been eating my bullets. And somebody talked talk to me about that in the comments, and unfortunately, by the time that I read that comment, it had been eating all of my bullets at the time, so yeah, I'm not too pleased about that. You know, another bug in the game. Surprise, surprise. Alrighty, so, um, Joel, Joel, Joel. You are down over here. You don't even have a shot anyway. So let's have you just swap out with Walter. Joe has 66 of 90 HP, so he's kind of like him and Elaine are basically our sturdiest people at this point. So I say we move forward one more time and we take a shot. 85% chance to hit. Luckily it did hit. He's got a jackhammer or something. That's kind of terrifying. He's badly wounded. Alrighty, Elaine. Can you land two shots, Elaine, or do we just go in there and try to get two swings in? Let me try the shot. 55 is terrible as hell. So let's just go forward, and we'll sing twice at him. 55% chance to hit. Oh, my fucking god. What about the gun now? 65. Alrighty, well. We could do a flurry. <laughs> a flurry is 25% chance to hit. Oh, cool. Even worse. Yeah, I might as well go for the basic attacks, and hopefully I get lucky to one of them. I doubt it. Oh, hey! We landed one. We landed both of them, but still not enough for the kill. And now he's going to be really hurt, by the way. Or she's going to be really kind of in a tough spot because that guy's going to just jackhammer up. Alrighty. Doug reloaded. It's my turn again. Now, if I could get to where this guy is, I could probably do a diagonal swing. 
One, two, three, four, five. Nope, I can't do a diagonal swing. I have to go seven, swap, not enough for an attack. Fuck, 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 fuck. All right, here's what we do then. I just drop heals on Doug meanwhile. Doesn't matter, I can't get up there anyway. All righty. So here comes Elaine's swing. This guy's gonna, you know, jack her up pretty bad too, no more than likely. Oh, I'm so glad that I missed, because if that hit, that could be a world of hurt. So no more gunshots at this point. We just need to land a few hits and he'll be dead. So let's go for this one. Oh, fucking damn it. Of course that would happen. All right, Elaine. Can you actually land these again? Probably not. Let's get you next to him and then try it from here. Such low damage. Okay, well. Oh, Doug. Doug, I mean, take all the shots if you have to as long as you hit him. Oh, motherfucking. Okay. Okay. We're still not out of it. We move you forward. Almost dead, my fucking ass he is. He would have died already. He's bleeding out, too. Okay, we go here. And we... We hope for the best. Oh, my fucking god. Thank you. Thank you. And turn. Oh, my god. Okay. One second. We need a... Oh, fucking course. Move... Move out of the way! <laughs> it's, it never ends! Gross man, you are making this highly gross, you motherfucker! We're gonna call an episode here! I am gonna hopefully wrap up this episode next time, and um, we will continue going forward from there. We'll probably have to head back to base too, because everybody's kind of really hurt. And I need to get Max in the party so bad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you next time.